And so, truthfully, I'm going to take a little break. I'm trying to finish this up. And then I'm going to take a little break. Hopefully, I can finish this up right here. I got, I got faith in it. I got faith in it. I sent a lot of empty pages. So, good job there. And then, you know, if you want to catch me reading the call, the, the call is one of catch me on live. I'll probably do that today. Will I do that before this finish uploading? Probably. Probably. More more than likely, probably. So, I promise to be good and let it save so you can come hear that. The big match. You and Kobe are on teams that like each other as much as Crocs and Kion Wilder Beast. There's already a scrimmage during the matchup. There's no beef between you and Kobe, but you will go hard. Come with your A game. Because while winning is wicked, bragging about winning is icing on the steak. <clears throat> yeah. Game on. You good, Nick? Kobe asked at midfield for the coin flip. Good enough to beat your starting team, you answer. Not going to happen. Parnell, your coach captain, jogs up. Kobe dabs you, then goes to shake Parnell's hands. But Cornell leaves Kobe hanging. Told you it was a rivalry. Call it, the ref says, then costs us a quarter. Kobe calls tails. He loses. You choose the ball. Before Kobe returns to leave, Parnell ch chickles, sorry about that chopstick, then laughs. But Kobe laughs back, then weeks in him. And Par Parnell is flung flocks or pissed or both. Both teams take their position. You know Kobe's smile is misleading. He's ready to pounce. Score. You pass to the four whose shot stings like wasabi, not dis then disappears into net. Booyah! I like, yeah. Right before halftime, with the score 2-1, to one, Kobe dribbles the ball past two of our defenders, speeds down the sidelines like a cheetah, then slants toward the middle. Pernell is the only player from our team left between him and our goalie. It's a matchup you know Kobe has been itching for since the start whistle. As soon as Parnell charges, Kobe cuts back, and you know what comes next. Parnell dives in for the take. Oh, wow. Kobe nutmegs him. A soccer trick in which the ball is dribbled between the defender's legs. Imagine a ball of sun sneaking through the clouds. Lionel Messi is so good he could probably nutmeg a mermaid. Now that's hot. He demolishes Purnell, drops him to his butt, treats him like a dog, sits, stay. The crowd goes wild. Both sides, and when he tries, when he ties the game, even your grin as your best friend's genius, payback is a beast, isn't it? Yeah, you wasn't supposed to be cheering for him, but you know, that's all right. Hold on. All right. Guess who's back? The Mac and Electric Blue Chuck Taylors. Runs over to your bench during the break. Hey, Nick, you didn't tell me Kobe was a bus driver, huh? He took that fool to school. You want to agree loudly, but that fool is your teammate. So you just kind of nod. You don't look so well, partner. Uh, It's just hot out here. Which is the worst thing I could have said, because then the Mac starts rapping. It's getting hot in here in front of the entire team. Halftime, right after you glance at April waving from the bleachers, your stomach detonates. Kaboom! And you lose it right there behind the bench in Pernell's gym bag. Ugh, you sick. Coach asks, Nick, you okay? Yep, better. I need to sub you. No, I'm good, Coach. Good. Then then get in there. I, I feel somebody, something bad happening. Second half, the game tied when Daddy finally shows up. You throw in, you throw in to Pernell who screams it. Your bet is in a boxing match and losing bad. Here comes Kobe. Pernell taunts him. Fangs the pass. Kobe doesn't fall for it. Instead, he leaps like a lion. They collide. Pernell eats dirt. Curses. Man against boy, Kobe says. Standing over Pernell. Ah, uh, the Reese holds yellow card to Gurney Kobe. 32 minutes left. Ah. Uh. Nine minutes left. Can't this be over already? The jabs to your belly are almost unbearable. Dad was right. Food poisoning. You'll never eat fish again. Ever. Pernell direct free kick is wide left. The pain is right beneath your rib. You dribble fast. Somewhere, somehow you go in front of Kobe and he holds you. From behind you slip. The, ref, the referee blows the whistle. Whistle. Play stops. Kobe gives you a hands up. If he gets another yellow, he's done. Game over for him. Just a warning. Whew. Pernell comes over, gets in Kobe's face. You think you're a Mercedes player, but you're just dirty. If you want to play dirty, we can do that. And after I take you down, I'm going to make you wash my clothes, cut my grass, lace my sleeves. You about to get shook, crook. The pain only allows you to laugh a little. Parnell is crazy, but he better watch out. Because Kobe, who bumps Parnell's shoulder as he walks away, looks pretty freaking pissed. But you get the ball again and take off for the corner. 
You almost forget the pain. Almost. It's sharp, like an uppercut. There's a go. And there's Kobe again, running towards you like a gazelle. Your stomach can't take any more punches. No one in front of you but the goalkeeper. Come on. You can make it. And Kobe, you pass it to Purnell. He shoots it back to you. You get ready to drive the ball home. Everything slow motion like you are the matrix. And Kobe is Neo. And Neo is a bull. And the bull's eye is on you. Two crazy eyes glued to the ball. You whine for the kick. Whack, pow. Kobe's cleats aim for the ball. Finds you. To whack. Ankle instead. The two of you fall whistle. Sideways to the ground. E e ow. Your ankle pops. Your stomach explodes. Knockout. I know y'all like to squeeze. I don't think it was supposed to be dramatic like that. I don't know. I think it was. Hospital. Hello, says a woman with big ears holding a oscoscope in her hand. How are you feeling? She asks while looking in your eyes. Um, I'm in pain, you scream. That shoots you a look. It's okay, Mr. Hall. We're going to find out what's going on in there. Ah, it really hurts. Let's get... Let's get the OR oh, ready. Stats, she says. Because hospital is bald. It, so I just had to bald the words. Is that how that is done? I don't know. I probably did that wrong. Sue me in the comments. Let me know. I don't have the money, so I can't really pay you. But still sue me in the comments. You know. The algorithm and all that other good shit. So, you know. Ankle sprints are very common in soccer, she says, talking fast. Like she's in a hurry to show you the x-rays on her iPad. It'll hear pretty quickly a few days. Cool, you think, still in a boatload of pain. But I'm afraid that's the good news. The bad news is you don't have food poisoning. That sounds like good news to you. You have a preferred pressurated appendix and we need to get you into surgery. What does that mean, you ask? It means that your appendix was about the size of your tongue and located right here, she says, pointing to the bottom of her stomach on the right side, has ruptured. There's a tear in it and we need to surgically remove it before infection sets in. Surgery? When? Now! Yeah. Give me a minute to um, get get shocked. I am, I'm about to get there, I guess. I think. That's how they sprung it on us. No! Surgery. I don't want to die, you say. Everything's going to be fine, Nick. Dad says, on the way to the operating room. Mom's on the flight, he asks. So she'll be here when you get out of surgery. It's a quick operation, and I've done a million of these, as the doctor, as the orderlies roll you into the room. You clench your fist as if that's going to stop the ocean of fear that God has stored you. Count backwards from 10, and the doctor says, and before you completely, can't, you completely drown, everything goes black. Fact, there are 78 organs in the human body, but after the epidemy, uh, exomedonomy, you have 77, which is about, just about the number of text messages from friends and families awaiting you when you wake up in your room a few hours later. How are you feeling, Nikki? Like I just ran a marathon. Swam a million, a few laps and played back-to-back -back soccer matches is how you answer mom's questions. In your stomach, dad ass? Like butter, huh? Smooth and easy. Smooth and easy, you say giggling. Like then dozing back off to sleep? Bad. Your weight, blood count, blood cell count is elevated, the doctor says. What does that even mean, you say grimacing? Your count should be no higher than 5,000. What is it, dad asks, holding mom? Yeah, because, you know, this is the time to really confuse your, your son who wants you two to get back together and fall in love and all that good shit. You know? Cool. It's 20,000. So he need antibiotics to fight off any infections. How long do I have to be here? We'll just need to keep you a few extra days. But by then, the wounds should be all healed and we'll see you on your way. Sounds good? As long as, uh, as, long as it's only a few days, you say. I'm playing the big soccer tournament this week. The doctor, mom, and even the nurses who charge, change, who's changing your bandage to get out silent and stare at each other. Then it's you. You ain't playing soccer no more, my friend. Crickets. Worse, he'll be out of school for a week or two, depending on how he feels, the doctor says to mom, who rests her hand on your heart, which breaks into a thousand little pieces when the doctor asks. You'll be back playing soccer in no time, Nicholas. <laughs> no. The, day, the Dallas Cup is next week, you tell him. How long is no time? Only three weeks. No. Oh my God. Only, only three weeks. But Dallas is in one. Only your stomach is shattered and your dreams are done. Only not playing soccer makes the pain seem severe. Only your eyes can't conceal tear after tear. Only your ship is sinking and your miss all the fun. Only three weeks. But Dallas is in one. We so hurt. We so heartbroken for him right now. The end. 
When a horse breaks his leg, the bone shatters, the nerves. The living tissue can't heal because there's not enough blood supply. There's no recovery from that type of damage. It's over. They may as well put that, put you down. Damn. TV therapy. My shoe general has six ESPN channels, but this does not impress your dad. This sucks. T Tonham Ham is playing Arsenal, but you switched to Hawaii 5-0 because watching football will only irritate you, remind you of what you're missing. Room service brings you cold soup. And just before Steve's mother murder is revealed, dad turns it off. Uncle Dad, you say. You're not going to binge on cop shows or ESPN all day, he says. Dad, the boredom is killing me. Maybe you should read, he adds, and slides his, his dictionary closer to you. You didn't bring no regular books. You... I just was about to die, and the books you bring to me are dictionaries. You ain't got no, you ain't, you ain't got no books to learn it. Like, new rules. You get five TV minutes for each page read. Does it have to be your book? It does not. Mom kisses you goodbye. Sleep tight, Nikki, she says, and they both walk out. He stops at the door, turns around like he forgot something, and just stares at you. Books are fun, Nicholas, he says. They're like amusement parks for readers. Yeah, well, maybe they would be fun if I got to pick the ride sometimes, you answer. Your eyes glued to the W's. Yeah! You can't just, you just can't be like, hey, we're writing the dictionary today. <laughs> Hop on. Hop on this bitch. The next morning, the nurse asks if she can get you anything. Bacon, eggs, and french fries, please reply. Breakfast. 30 minutes later, she returns with butter, wheat toast, cherry yogurt, and Kobe. Make you want to cry. Conversation with Kobe. Hey, Nick. What's up? The sky. I saw your mom and dad in the lobby. Yeah, they never leave. It's annoying. I think they were arguing. Why would you say that? Because your mom wasn't talking and your dad didn't look happy. He never looks happy. True. I was going to come earlier, but my mom says you needed your rest. What I needed is some real food. True. Pernelia's an idiot. I should have done something. Dot, 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 dot. Stare off. Sorry about that tackle. I was going for the ball. Yeah, I know. I would have scored. We would have won. I don't think so. You got booked? Yeah, rough threw me out. Sorry about that. How's the stomach? It's feeling better. The food's disgusting. That sucks. Yeah. How How did you get here? My dad. Really? Yeah, he's coming to the Dallas Cup. Dot, dot, dot. Sorry you can't come, Nick. Good luck. I'll bring you something back. Bring me a jersey or a ball. I'll give my bag to buy us to buy us some swag, definitely. Kobe, you miss him a lot? Not really. We talk all the time, and I see him every summer. Uh, I know it's kind of hard right now, but you get used to it. Dot, 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 dot. Get used to what? Hey, man, you is playing Arsenal. Let's watch. Can't. Huh? Can't watch TV Uh, right now. Oh. <laughs> Dear Skip, Mac, you can't find me here. I'm a prison. Trapped. By a verbal maniac. And locked far from fun, from freedom. Will you please bust me out? Save me from this madhouse, a borderman, weird words. Bring bring a decent book at ASAP. P.S. Please make it a thin book with a lot of white space on the page. Thanks. Rap approachment. Uh, a reestablishment of harmless relations. Are they getting back together? In the middle of a scramble, the nurse comes in to take your blood pressure for the third time today. I don't know where mom starts crying and apologizing for breaking up the family to chase her in, in unique dreams. Then dad starts telling her it's not her fault and how now he's sorry for not paying attention to her and respecting her career. And then they hug for like 15 minutes. Visitor's Day. While you're figuring out the math of it all, two more days in the hospital, probably watch 8 to 10 hours of TV a day for a total of 1,000 to 1,200 minutes. Which means you have to read at least 200 pages. Ugh. Guess who strolls in? April. Oh, no. Wrong person. I, I guess we didn't, we ain't, we ain't learned nothing these 216 pages because we thought it was April. And guess what? It was. Hello, Nicholas. Miss Harrick, this isn't a pigment of my, your imagination. And a, melopho a melophrism I remember. Very good. How are you feeling? I'm cursed, I guess, but I can't play soccer. I'm sorry to hear that. I didn't have a, a appendicitis, a but I had kidney stones. It's fun. It's worse. Not fun. Not fun at all. Dot, dot, dot. We miss you in class. Who is we? Since you're going to be out for a few weeks, I thought I'd bring on assignment. Dot, dot, dot. Yay, me. Mr. McDonald said you asked for a book. And it just so happens we recently started a new one. The Mac is a traitor, you think? 
He couldn't make it today. But he will stop by tomorrow, she says, handing you a book called All the Broken Pieces. I think you may find a good read here, Nicholas. Thank you, Miss Harwick. I'm taking a lot of antibiotic medication, you know, so I fall asleep a lot. So I'm not sure how long it would take me to read this, you say. Yawn loud so she can hear you. I always a comedian, Nicholas. I bought someone to see you. Are you at another visitor? Or are you too sleepy, she says with a smirk. You glance out the window, wondering who it is. It's probably Mr. Mac trying to make an entrance. Sure, you answer. Well, then, you have a good day and a speedy recovery. I miss my words, Miss, she said, winking. You open the book, notice the number of pages, 240. You do it. Well, that's promising, you think, as your next guest saunters into the hospital room. Hey, Nick, please be April. This has got to be a sweeten. Yes, got to be a sweeten. There is no way this is happening. No freaking way. Hi, Nick. Um, hi, um, uh, I'm, um, April, sorry. I'm just a little s s stupid. I, I mean, and of course you mean spotified, but you're too spotify to actually say it. Sorry about your opinions. The whole class signed this. She hands you a good world card signed by everyone. I'm sorry you can't play soccer. That must make you feel pretty, um, absent. You shot her a look of surprise. What? It means angry. I know what it means. Oh, wow. To start up overwhelmed with amusement. I'm sure, I sure hope this isn't a, a swoon. I've been reading that dictionary, she said, smiling. Where do you get that? Mr. Max showed it to us at book club. A lot of cool words. Wow, that's uh, interesting. I wouldn't say it's cool, though. What letter are you on? X? Wow, almost finished. I've been reading it for, uh, like, three years. Whoa, tell me an X word. X you? Sounds like you. Sounds like Z. Yeah, most of the X words are pronounced like that. What does it mean? It's the money they used in Vietnam before the war. Like a dollar, only X you? She says, and you stare at her lips way too long. Exactly. X you? Well, I see Miss Hardwick gave you the Broken Pieces book. It's really good. You read it? Yep. And get this. The boy in the book is really good at baseball. And he's from Vietnam. You'll like it. Trust me. Did she just say, get this? Yeah, and get this? Oh, well, I gotta go. Text me. Let me know what you think of the book. Um, okay. Bye, Nick. Get well soon, because you and I have some dancing to do. And she kisses you goodbye on the forehead. More like a grandmother would. But that's not going to stop you from never washing your head. Ever. You're not really into basketball. But you give the book a chance for obvious reasons. Plus, you need to earn some minutes. Yeah, you're trying to watch TV shit. All the Broken Pieces is about war, but told by a boy your age who can't seem to find peace as the bomb blows his village and his brother's pieces. Then a soldier takes him to America where he's adopted and just about to find out if he's made the basketball team on page 54, which means you just amuse four hours and 30 minutes of non-stop TV. Click. <laughs> this but we're done here. I got enough TV time. <laughs> I'm ready to watch TV now, Daddy. The next day after a night of channel suffering and back-to-back -back reruns of Star Trek, the morning sun rushes in courtesy of the nurse raised in the blinds. You eat gooey fruit cocktail, and just before you power up your tablet, the Max strolls in with his bowling bag and duffel, sporting, sporting a blue and white hoodie that reads, Put your face in a book. Conversation with the Mac. I bought you a gift, she says, handing you a box wrapped in gift paper. The Dragonfly box? Well, it is a box, he says. Plopping himself down in the chair. Thanks, Mr. Mac, you say, opening the greasy, wide cardboard box. Mr. Max, this is KFC. Yeah, sure is. Bought you a three-piece chicken meal and a biscuit, he says. Um, thanks, but I really can't eat that kind of stuff yet, Mr. Mac. Good, because there's only one piece left. Give it here. I don't know if I'm on hungry or tired, Nick. Wow. I guess it's about the count. Because I would have banged it. Dot, 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 dot. I just watched from the boat now. And it was a terrible walk, because I lost. Why didn't you drive? Luckily, Fanny died. Had it for 13 years. Guess your luck ran out, Mr. Mac. If I wasn't so tired, I'd laugh at that. Did you get that book? Yup, I'm reading it. What page are you on? 54. Nice. Any thoughts? Yes, yeah, it's all poetry. And it's okay. So, why are you reading it? So, why are you reading it if it's just okay? Dot, 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 dot. You're reading it because of April Farrell. Told you to read it, he says. And laughs so loud, the person in the room behind you bangs on the wall. 
So what do you think of the main character, Matt Penn? I kind of feel bad for him. Getting picked on. I can relate. Getting picked on by whom? The Mac interrupts. His classmates. They call him names like Fireface and Matt, Matt the Rat and Rice Patty and our names to call someone, don't you think, Nick? He's from Vietnam, so the kids treat him different. They're prejudiced, I guess. Can't wait to find out what he does. Because right now, he just does nothing. What would you do, Nick? I'd probably stand up for myself. No. And then the Mac stops talking and drifts off, staring out your window. And you're left wide awake, thinking of all your broken pieces. Because you know you wouldn't, have, you wouldn't have stood up. Read aloud. When he wakes up ten minutes later, the Mac wipes out his copy, plops down in a vinyl chair at the foot of your bed, kicks off his white high tops, props both legs up, yarns louder than an elephant seal, stressed and proceeds to read to you like you're in kindergarten in this story town. Would've loved it. He sounds like he's on the mic rapping. His flow is sick. He pops his shoulder, bobs his head, all while reading. You listen, you laugh, you follow along. Didn't think you were going to like this book. Two hours later, when the Mac lands on the final page, the doctors and nurses who lingered and listened and who crowd your room give the Mac a standing ovation. Yeah, he just he just made that book the shit. Text to April. Hey, April, I finished the book. The beginning was a little slow, but the ending was right. was tight. The poems were cool. The best ones were like, were like bombs, and when all the right words came together, it was like an explosion. So good, I guess. Then it wanted to end. I give it an 8.6. Sorry for the long text. Hey, what are you reading next? Because, you know, we didn't actually read the end of the book. It got read to us, but, you know, you ain't got to know all them details. You ain't got to know all them details. Those are details you do not need to know. Text from April. I'm glad you got to go. I'm glad you get to go home tomorrow, Nikki. Sending you a pic of our next book so you can read it with us, you know. I just, I just, you know, recruit you into the book club because you like me and I like you and um, I like reading books and you like reading books because you like me, and we have something to talk about, you know, because you can't play soccer anyway. Discharged. It's 9:30 a.m. Checkout day. You've been up for four hours because you couldn't sleep after thinking about April and the baseball book, so you read it again, but not the whole thing, just the dream, the parts you dreamed about. And then the sun came out, and the remote needed a new battery, and you were bored, so you picked up. Get this, his dictionary, and you was finishing the wise when in walked mom and dad. So they should be proud of you, cause not only did you read all these other books, you read books pages in the dictionary again. T kill it, high fast all around the board. We high five in the fitness, bitch. We we smacking ourselves with high fast. That's how deep it is. Driving home, shotgun you deal. How much TV did you watch? Mom says from the back seat. A lot. Read a book too. Really? Yep. And you liked it? Uh, yeah. You say. Can we stop by the library? I need to get another one. Sure, and after lunch, I can beat you in ping pong, Mom answers. Now, I mean, no, I got to chill out in my room. I'm a little tired, you lie. Out of the dust is a story like a lanky piano girl named Billy Joe, whose mother is gone, whose father's heart and soul are disappearing into the dust that blankets that Oklahoma town. And even though the first 59 pages rain down hard on you, when you get to page 60, the moon sun comes and the book is unput downable. Well, I'll tell you, now you read it for love. You dial April's number six times, but each time you hang up before it rings because you're nervous and don't know what to say. So before the seventh time, you decide to write down a list of everything you want to say to her, but you don't plan on her father answering. Follow Phone conversation. Um, Hello, Mr. Farrell. Is um, April available? Who is this calling? It's me, sir, Nicholas. Her friend from school? Her friend from school? I never met you. Uh, Well, what do you want, son? I'd like to speak to her, please, sir. About what? About a uh, a book that we're reading. Oh, really? And what book would that be, Nicholas? It's called um it's called Dust. Um, it's a uh, Dad, give me the phone. Stop! You hear April scream in the background. Well, Nicholas, you have ten minutes to speak to my daughter about this book that she's reading. You understand? Yes, sir. Hi, Nick. My dad can be so lame sometimes. She whispers. It's okay. What are you doing? I just completed out of the dust. You answer reading from your notes. Sweet. What did you think? It was Stella, and I was quite moved by the constellation of the human spirit okay what are you talking why are you talking like that nick like what you sound like a robot i am very i am very much looking forward to the next book we are reading stop acting silly nick dot 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 i was thinking that you could put the you could pick the next book nick me yeah the book club needs to, to mix it up a little but um i'm not in the book club well you kind of are now nikki okay you say laughing a little i'm serious you're official now no it's not that my mom calls me nikki no oh i'm sorry no you can call me that Okay, what is your mom doing? She's fine. She's still here? 
Yeah, I think she's gonna stay. Very cool. Da 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 da. So you're gonna pick a book? Yeah, I guess. Maybe we can discuss the book at your house or something. Um, I don't know about that. My parents probably won't let me do the. Maybe you can ask your mom, Nikki. Da 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 da. Yeah, cause you know we trying to get along with you. Why you? Why you? Why you fighting this? So what are you doing now? I'm practically folding my clothes and preparing to clean up my net of my room. Oh, Nikki, you're cray cray. How? He's just cleaning his room. What you find on Google? Dear Know It All, Percy Jackson. If you're reading this, it's too late. Planning middle school. Maybe may catching fire because of Winnie Dixie. Smile. I will save you when you reach me where the sidewalk ends. Until we meet again, peace, La Motion, Darius Twig, the outsider, PSB 11. Okay. I'm, I can read two more. We got our problem on the chapter. One more. Dreams come true. Miss Hogwarts moving to another state to teach. The twins got kicked out of out for the rest of the year. April's coming to your house. Your family is back together. And you finally and you start back soccer soon. Finally. Normal seems possible again. I don't know why I'm not liking this. Toby called again. Today Kobe called. When he got back from Dallas. Asked you to come over. You said no. Tell him you had to clean up. Which was half true. You didn't have to. You wanted to. Because mom said the only way she let April come over was if you cleaned the refrigerator, your bathroom, and your room, and organized the closet. So you limped around and did just that happily. Knock, knock. And mom answers the door. You hear April's voice. But wait, she's not alone. Ugh. Okay. So, uh, of course, you want to stick around and see who April show brought to the, brought to the, to the you know, for the, for the book club. It's a book club. So it's because she, she bothered people, of course. Of course. We didn't, we didn't think it was today. 